welcome back to the Crooked Spine Show. Today's talk is with students who want to become healthcare practitioners. I want to teach them exactly what it takes to work with patients and be successful in their practice, whatever it might be. I start with helping understand how to listen and how to practice listening, to self-discipline they need right now and in the future, also to how to make a good first impression, also patience at times it takes to actually learn your art and skill, also two patient exam tips. I actually walked through with Sarah as an example, how to, how to interview a patient and also adjust her at the same time live, scaring all the students, it was awesome. Also two, the importance of volunteer experience now to help you learn your craft, exactly what you want in the future, right? So enjoy the talk, listen in, and we'll hear from you afterwards. So a lot of when I do my talks is, how can you test yourself through your, okay? Mm -hmm. Through your, say, family members, for one, because you can, they won't sue you, right? Usually one family won't sue you. It's to see if they, they can help you know if you're a good fit for healthcare. What I tell people is talk to an old aunt, uncle, maybe grandparents, whatever it is to, someone likes to tell stories, okay? Can you sit there for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, Listen to their story and not be frustrated or bothered. You know what bothered means? Yeah. Like, oh, I want to get out of here. Yeah. So my classes, right? I'm like, why can't I just leave? <laughs> okay? So a lot of it is, can you actually sit there and have a conversation with them and go, man, it's interesting. What about this, this, and this? Can you carry a conversation with someone sometimes you don't know, like going to senior citizen home for one, too, and go and help out and go, hey, uh, can I talk to you? So what's, what's your life story? What's going on? You can have those conversations yeah, it's a good start getting the health care. It does take good grades. You can't get around that. Some people have tried, a lot of people have tried. It takes good grades. This is your gateway to get into a medical system program, nursing, med school, and beyond. Even just a four-year science degree to get into med school, you need good grades. Okay, anyone here play softball before? Any, any, any sports? Anything, anything, right? Any sports. Sometimes when you're younger, it starts real slow. Over time, it gets faster, more competitive, faster, more competitive. That's where you are right now. Right now, you're at the, the intermediate, maybe beginner level of a sporting team for one or sporting event. Okay? You get to the next level after high school, that's your intermediate level. If you want to specialize into a healthcare field, that's where you have to be the expert and the pro starting now. If you don't have good grades now, high B's or at least A's for one, two, it's going to be so hard when you get out of here. Work your tail off now. The reason is, once you get to the next level, all you're doing is sciences. Think science is hard now. Think if you're doing four science classes in a row every day, having a test every day, and every quarter going, hey, look, did I make it or not make it? Well, I went to UC University, UCR, a couple of cities over. Got a BS in biology about a thousand years ago. Okay. From there, I got my chiropractic degree a couple years later. When went to chiropractic school, all the, all the schools after this are all profit schools. How much do you pay tuition here? How much do you guys pay? Nothing. Zero, right? Okay. Next level, you start paying thousands of dollars every semester to go to school. Their job is to make sure you're ready for the next level, maybe getting a license, become a nurse, a PA, uh, at that point, or going to a four-year college or passing the MCAT, whatever it is, so that's when you have to be ready for that. When you pay thousands of dollars a semester or quarter, if you don't pass, what happens? They kick you out, what happens? You still owe that money back. It doesn't go away. I have friends I went to chiropractic school with. At that point, half my class did not graduate. They owe tens, of maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. Half my class five years after I graduated are now doing something else. This is, again, a thousand years ago. So, I'm 20, so 20 years of practice about 15 years ago, half that class is doing something else five years after they started or had their degree or came out of from chiropractic school. Realize it's not easy, but when it's not easy, it's worth it. If you put the time and effort now to realize whatever I get grade-wise, it helps me, not maybe not just the actual grade in that class, but that work ethic to get to the next level, next level, next level. What I mean by that? Who went, to, who went to the homecoming game last Friday night? I was there. Okay. Who had, who had a test? Say, for example, you have a test on Monday. <coughs> Your friends go, hey, let's go out and see a movie on Sunday night. What do you do? Do you study go for the test? Movie. Go see the movie. Yeah. You're not, 
in, 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 in a higher degree uh, medical program later on. Can, can, can you take your poison, figure out what's important to you now versus what's important to you later? Can you sacrifice sometimes some friends that are not good for you that will not help you get to the next level in the sense where, or some friends that can help you stick with those people too? There is a rule, I forget the name of the rule is, called six degrees of separation. You're only as good as the six people around you. Maybe grade-wise, health-wise, whatever it is, attitude-wise, whatever it is. So pick your friends wise, because what happens if you have loser friends? You're considered a loser. Sorry, that's just the way the world works. So how do you find friends that help you that are not losers? And, and again, there's a lot of peer pressure, doesn't matter what, how old you are, whatever it is, is the age doesn't matter, it's what you're around. So when you pick friends that are cool, sometimes they don't help you get to the next level. Sometimes they won't go to where you want to be, have the same goals as you. So when you know that, you have to come time step away and sacrifice that friendship for you, for you be selfish to get what you want out of life, not what they want out of life. All right? Any questions so far? What's the, what's the, uh, what's it called? How many times do you get to make a first impression? Once. Once. Okay? Not that hard to think. So if I come in here wearing a Hawaiian shirt, say a shorts and, and a flip-flops, would you say, is that guy really a doctor? Yes. I would say that too. <laughs> yeah, same thing. I come here dressed up, and I sometimes wear a jacket, just tied to get my jackets at work because I came, home from, came, home from, uh, came from home and I work today, is I come here dressed up because I want to respect you and show you that respect. So my thing is, if you're going to show up at a clinic and volunteer or go and ask for a reference or want someone to help you, dress because you respect them, not because of what you feel sometimes, what I want to dress like today. I know some chiropractors, they wear Hawaiian shirts to work. That's not what I would do, it's just not me. Because right, every page comes in the door, I don't, they don't, sometimes they don't know me, I don't know them. I want to give them the respect that, hey, you're here, you're here for my help, I respect you for coming to me and I thank you for doing that. Let me find a way to help you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What is the rule of being on time? If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. Yes. Great. Perfect. You're, some people have Some people have heard that. Some people have not heard that. To be on time means to be early. And it gets stuck because some people are going from outside of campus or here. This is a fun thing. But if you're good in internships or volunteering or looking for someone to help you, making an appointment show up 10 minutes early as an employer myself as someone who has interns in my office I that's my sign I don't say anything I'll go oh they're 10 minutes late every day I'm like oh, great they won't be here very often or very long because that's reflection of that person if they're late what else character is not going to help my office my business as an intern by them having that what else are they gonna it puts a negative connotation negative impression on whatever employer or wherever you're volunteering or helping, whatever it might be. Basic stuff, right? Not that this isn't hard stuff, okay? Let's show the second video. This is a, uh, might be a little bit more entertaining than the first one, let's see. Lights, sir. Lights, please. Lights, sir. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Just for quick, keep recording. <coughs> You're good. Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm gonna set up. Okay. He's gonna get you ready, relax. Okay. <laughs> fine, fine. Honey, mm -hmm. really, this is gonna be okay. Right. Right. So remember, it's gonna make you feel better. Turn your head first. Okay. I'm gonna have you go right here. Okay, go. I'm good. I'm good. Oh god. This is so violent. That's a lot of pressure. Oh god. That's a really loud ear, probably. Yes. See, I can't do this stuff for you, honey. Okay. This is why we made that you made that appointment. That was the harder side, sir. And remember, breathe, relax. You take your breath in, all the way out. Put your hands together so. Oh! How'd that go? Does that feel okay? It's exciting, right? But it feels okay. Oh boy, it's funny. <laughs> That's the hard part. Now we that. Make that. Make that. Oh, that was a deep breath. Oh, oh, oh. I got you. Oh, 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 this is going to be the, the easier, no, maybe like the middle easier one. 
Okay. This is nice. This is the one that you want me to do for you. Right here, bend your arm up. Oh, right here. Oh God, oh God. Right here. Full stretch. Right there, real easy, right? Deep breath in. Oh yeah, the shoulder relax. Oh, wait. Right there. Did it leave? Oh, right there. Did it? Okay. Okay, still left. No, okay. That's it. Holy side. This is gonna be great when it's edited. <laughs> so great. Jesus. Okay. 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 ways for help them relax. This is called 17 years in practice. It takes time, it takes time, it takes time to get the confidence up, the experience, so you know how to deal with each person coming through the door. This is what you're starting the process of learning that through your books. With Mars and his wife, again, they're good people. He's an actor in Hollywood. A lot of it is I have to be able to aggressive enough with him, confident enough in my skills to be effective with him. A lot of chiropractors coming out of school or just their personality, they wouldn't want to adjust someone like that. They want to be that aggressive. The problem is unless you move things around, which I'll show you in a second with Seraphim, a lot of it is it's not effective. I had a guy come in from Kansas, he was working for Costco on a contract job, and he came in and he called me, he goes, hey look, I've seen three chiropractors in the area, are you a bone popper? I'm like, what do you mean bone popper? Do you move bone? Because I see three chiropractors, no one can move my neck. I'm like, oh, I'm going to move your neck all right. <laughs> so my job is to be aggressive enough when they need it, when I get the clearance, when I know it's not risky, I take pictures in my office, pictures in my office. At that point, I know it can be effective when I get things to move. All right, any questions so far? Okay, sir, yes? Um, is it harder to do it on bigger people? Like him versus somebody like my size? It is, but the biggest thing with what we do is technique. Technique is an art form. It's like being a painter. You have to learn how to help people relax and how to set them up properly. The bones are meant to move certain positions. Maybe rotate side to side. Some have different angles too. So my job is to get in there and they ask you how you do. I'm like, I don't remember anymore. It's like the piano or, or, or things like that. You go in there and you touch things around. That point you figure out where the tension point is, on his lower back for example. If you guys not going to move or not. And I want to go another three degrees after I get the tension to really push in that area with what I do. I work out six days a week. I try to stay as strong as I can. And most people I can move pretty well. But it's technique, it's form, it's leverage too. What's, you know what leverage is? Okay. But some people don't know that. The leverage is the longer I have a, for example, uh, let me see here. I'm not being, let's do, let's use the flag. So I can see top of my head. Right. If I'm trying to push something, for example, using this, this has more a lever arm or longer leverage 
So if I use this to turn something, for example, like a, like a ratchet or a wrench, at that point, this allows me more force to do that. I, have, I can take off a, for example, a socket or a wrench or a screw with a lot easier this way. If I have a very short screwdriver, do you have a pen? Pen, pen, anyone? Anyone have a pen to do more? Jesus. On here. Thank you. If I try to take a screwdriver off and do something like this, it can take me a lot more of my personal force versus the length of that tool. So having a longer arm and using my body the way I can allows me to move things around a lot easier. Okay? But again, it's technique. I had one guy come in and see your pen. I, I wasn't paying attention. I have a glass side and the left side. Okay. And a lot of it is, is I had a guy come in in 2006, 16. And November, November, October, I can't remember exactly, he was 460 pounds, 6'8". He made this guy look small. I had to jump in the air like a ninja <laughs> to actually move him. And I moved him, but I jumped in the air like a ninja. I, I sometimes will do chiropractic seminars for chiropractors, and a lot of chiropractors have problems with, they get hurt. Because I'm pushing guys around like this all day long. I have to stay physically healthy to do this. Some doctors sometimes don't or have a, an injury at home or something else too. Because of that, you can no longer practice. So when you're in the healthcare field, when you're a professional, you have to watch your own body, physically staying healthy, but also to preventing in injuries. I tried to play basketball a few years ago, and I could play basketball, but I'd come back Monday going like, okay, now I can't move for three days. I can't treat people like that. So I have to watch what I do, restrict what I do sometimes, based on my profession, I can do Monday through Friday. Sometimes Saturday if I want to, if I'm Sarah for the one. What was your other question? Um, do you ever get like anxious or like scared to like to crack someone? Like, I tell I tell first time I just first time I did someone like Mars, I just go, okay, make sure not this is the one. No. <laughs> no. Now, a lot of it is we take the X rays first. We look at their history, figure out what the kind of problems they had before too. Especially with the neck too, make sure I have no neck injuries that are long term chronic or surgeries too. Someone come in with a neck fusion a couple days, a couple weeks ago, someone yesterday with a back fusion. So looking at their kids, knowing their history, it tells me what I can and can't do. So, and we have malpractice that covers that, and something does happen, but we don't want to use it really, it's too exciting to use it. Yes? So when there is a situation like that where you can't move someone because of an injury, what other options are there for that? We have therapy, we have stretching, we have massage. Okay. And sometimes the best thing I'll do is refer them out to a specialist, that folks on they can give them sometimes if they need two shots, or even other even other things they can do with them, uh, manipulation things inside the stomach. Okay. So a lot of it is what I do as a chiropractor is I refer out to neurologists, orthopedists, sometimes nurses or primary doctor to make sure they're right care no matter what. They come out for help. And that can help them, that I can diagnose the problem properly, usually, based on the x-rays I can see in my office, to let them know where to go next. So we take actually in the office and see the same day exactly what's going on. If I don't know what's going on, Here's your referral for an MRI. Let's make sure you get the right care wherever it is. My best patients are the ones that call me back, hey, look, thanks for referral. I needed that because I had this problem going on. I appreciate your help. I may not treat everyone like that, but I can help them understand the problem. As a chiropractor, uh, an osteopath, or a medical doctor, that's our jobs as national licensed doctors to do that, to diagnose properly and or refer out. You had a question? Yes. So what are like, the potential risks like if someone is inexperienced or something? The patient level or the, or the doctor level? Um, for like the patient level. The risk is sometimes being hurt or sore afterwards. Oh, that's it? So the thing is what we do, that's it. That's really, it's, that's, this, he's just, Mars is just dramatic, obviously. Okay. <laughs> A lot of it is, is we take the risk out of playing our office by taking the x-rays in the office. That sees what's going inside the spine. We'll look for fractures tumors, dislocations, what's going on inside. And if we move someone's spine, move things around, at that point that movement is a physical movement. If something is already strained, or an artery, for example, is already calcified, you try to stretch that artery out, it can actually cause an aneurysm. Aneurysm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That would cause things to work and tear the artery. And that's the one to right. avoid that completely. <laughs> but I blame my partner, my partner is not me. He was over there. Yes? So I watch videos of people they do what you do. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, he uses a, a Y strap. Mm -hmm. Do you use that? No, I use these. Does your hands? I use these. That's it. What's a Y strap? They, it's like yeah. this. It's like it's like a towel kind of thing, and they put it around the neck and they pull it this way. <gasps> and 
Oh, oh no. Yes. yes. Is that well, safe? It, it's, yeah. it's safe for some, chiropractic safe for everybody, but the risk involves a lot higher because then you're pulling and cause pull distraction. Your fingers are, when you, when you train with, as a chiropractor, you spend about three, about three years total working with people that your hands and your fingers sensitive to doing that all day. It takes time, time, time. And adjusting how your form is technique based on your body too. I had one girl in my class, she was maybe five, two, five, three, hundred pounds. And she adjusted people like that because her technique was just perfect. It's technique, it's form, it's everything. But using these, you get to feel where the bones are. Feel where the muscles tight. Look at the person's reaction in their face when you're adjusting them. Are they relaxed or not? What's causing them to be sore? Based on what I see in the entries in my head, when I'm feeling, that gives me a reason to treat them a certain way. Enough force, maybe higher or low, quick or slow, whatever it might be, what direction is going to be in also. Golf in my head, it happens about half a second. Boom, boom, boom. Next. It takes time to learn that technique. But again, it, but it, the thing here is, how do you learn how to get there? That's the point. So Seraphim, come on up. I'm not going to adjust you yet. So we'll in a minute. And can I borrow the green chair? Yes. Do you want me to get another? Uh, no, that's fine. This is good. Right here. These are good. Grab the seat in this one. And I, she has she has a sign from my office. She's an intern at my office, so okay. she knows what's going on. Okay. I'm going to walk you through a patient scenario, first patient visit. Okay, I, I want you to pick up what I'm doing because a lot of it is I build trust within five minutes with a patient that I can help them or not help them. They don't know who I am. They may see me on Facebook, TikTok, Instabook, all the grams, whatever it's <laughs> called. Okay, so it allows me to build that trust right away based on how I treat them and how they perceive me. All right, so I'm gonna walk into the room. Seraphim, correct? Yes. Good, Dr. Okay. Tony, nice to meet you. So what is going on with you? Tell me, your, tell me what's going on. Um, since like my studies, I have mm -hmm. to look down a lot. Yeah. So my neck is all hurting. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't take a break. Yeah. It doesn't stop, right? No. 24 seven, well besides even studying, it's also going to class, everything you're mm -hmm. doing too. Okay, when did it first start? Um, first started three weeks ago. Okay, what happened three weeks ago? It just caused tension in my neck. Okay. <laughs> and like sometimes I can't move like my neck to a certain mm -hmm. side. And is it, is it, I'm gonna, and again, watch this too. Is it more here <coughs> or more here toward the shoulder? Towards the shoulder. Okay, toward the shoulder. Is there anything run down the back? No. Anything run down in the shoulder? No. Good. Any hand tingling? Any hand numbness? No. Any hand weakness? No. Any run to the head causing headaches? Sometimes, yeah. Any eye pressure on that side? No. Good, good, good. And does it affect your breathing at all? No. Good. Does it affect you when you're sleeping? Sometimes. When you say sometimes, what does that mean? Like certain nights, if I'm um, just studying like real hard, mm -hmm. or like if I'm having like a rough day. And does it become more intense soreness wise, or does it travel more into the head or more, more down the shoulder? Good. Okay, when it becomes tense, what do you normally need to help alleviate it? I try to ice it. Good, good, good. Does, ice, does it help? Yeah. Good. Can I try to like massage like, my neck? Yeah, a little bit massage. Yeah. How about stretching? Not really. Not much? Not much. No. Okay, we talked about it before, but never mind. Okay, <laughs> so a lot of it is you're doing enough things to help alleviate it. Why? Have you done anything medically to treat it? No. Anything over the counter medications your mom and dad giving you? Nothing? Any type of spiritual healing? No. <laughs> I'll make sure. I don't know. Okay, so a lot of it is at this point, we'll just take an x-ray, see what's going on with the x-ray. And if that's okay with your parents, again, because your mind, I'm having to sign it off. At that point, see exactly what the x-ray is. The x-ray is going to tell us what kind of curves in your spine. The curve allows us to see exactly what would be locked up. If it's locked up under tension, that stress you're going through allows your body to tolerate that stress less. Do you know what stress is? Yeah. Do what stress? How would you define that? I would define stress as, well... Kind of a broad thing, right? Yeah, like it all, it all like depends mm -hmm. on the person. Mm -hmm. But sometimes stress can mean like you actually care about something. Yes, and, and what I say with stress is how do your body responds to stress? When you're healthy, you shouldn't have this going on. When there's something going inside the body. It's like, for example, neck being locked up in the area. That's what you're here for. At that point, your body tolerates stress less. So at that point, over time, it becomes less and less and less. So probably through a period of three weeks, it's probably affected you more. Correct. Mm -hmm. So over time, it, it's harder to alleviate the pain, too. So is it because of stress? Yeah. It's because the neck is being locking up. Uh -huh. Your body's tolerance can tolerate stress less. Oh, okay. Your body becomes more stressed, 
So you wake up the next day, you're already at a stress state. Versus healthy, you want to wake up at a relaxed state, you can handle that stress throughout the day, mm -hmm. that tolerance level becomes less and less and less. Once you reach that tolerance level, you go over that, your body goes like this, oh, my neck, oh, my head, oh, my headaches. Oh, what the heck's going on, right? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take the x-rays next, we need to get you adjusted afterwards. Too. Okay. All right. Hang right here. <laughs> How'd that go? What did you see? What did I do? You asked a lot of questions. So yes. You're being thorough. Good. Sure Good. Understood it. Okay. So I'm asking questions for more details of her answers, correct? Yes, sir. So you're really attentive. You're like nodding mm -hmm. towards her, and your distance is pretty good, I guess. And mm -hmm. you're like just attentive in general. I like that. Okay. When you say attentive, what does that mean? You're you're paying attention to the small details that she like. If she's confused about something, like you said, or like she said, you ask questions about it. And I'm asking for what does that mean? To, so I want to ask what it means. I want her to come up to meaning so she understands what it is. Or if she knows I don't, she doesn't know, she'll hesitate, and I'll fill in the blanks. So I'm not trying to interrupt her. I'm trying to let her do her to tell what she wants to say. At that point, I'm going to fill in the blanks so she feels comfortable with, with what's going on. And the nodding. Why? Why well, I think the nodding is important? Because then she, it's more comfortable for her. She trusts you more than mm -hmm. us. Trust and confirmation. I understand what's going on, and what she did too a couple times, because she's smart about it, she nods back too. When you nod, people know you do this, they nod back at you. It's amazing, it's magic. <laughs> yes, ma'am? Um, you shook her hand when you first met her, so it made her feel comfortable. Good. And it made her feel like you're you're there to help her, you're not there just to talk at her. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I'm not distant. By doing a little bit of a handshake and not like a grip and right. looking deep in her eyes, right. something to where I'm going, hey, let's have a conversation. I'm here with you. I'm next just on my iPad, taking notes. I'm not over here, like some people do. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I was going to ask like, you're giving her all your attention. You're already, like fidgeting or like, the paper or mm -hmm. like, you know, you're like just eye contact and like nothing. And a lot of it is to when you do that properly, you build that trust so you can help them. I, I do a lot of workshops for seniors, older people, right? They have good doctors sometimes, maybe a couple times a month, sometimes once a week based on their injuries or, or ailments or medications. Then what they, they, they tell me, seniors, is my doctor doesn't listen to me. What it means, like you just said right here, is they're just, they don't shake their hand, don't ask their questions. They don't want to know what's going on. They take the place where they say, thanks, thanks, thanks. Here's some medications, I'll see you in three weeks. No eye contact, nothing, no shaking hands. When she did this, it's right up here, what did I do? You went to make sure you understood what she was talking about. Now what did I do physically? You touched I, She did this, I said, I'm gonna go and touch that spot because that's where she wants me to touch it. At that point, I want to, she it confirms that that's where I think it is too. What, how was my body position, how's my body posture? Mm -hmm. hmm. You were like, you're not all, arms folded, like, attitude. Good. Like, uh, well, it was like, oh, yes. you're getting here again, twice in one <laughs> week, why? And you want to slouch, do you want to? I'm here because I'm confident I can help her. Why not show confidence? What, was her legs crossed? I can't see. Yeah, she, she, her legs were crossed. What did I do? You crossed her legs. Crossed my legs, too. Her hands were here. My hands were here. <laughs> okay, so by doing that, it's called, it's like, what was going on? It's mad. It's Jedi mind tricks. Is it's called something called like attracts like. When you act like somebody, when you speak their volume of voice, their tone of voice, their speed of, of speech, allows them to feel comfortable psychologically. And I'm not trying to trick her, but I want her to feel comfortable so she understands, I understand what's going on with her to help her get better. Any questions about that? Like attracts like. Posture, eye contact. If that's what you're doing, sometimes they're like this. Over here, you're not looking, I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll look down, and when she looks up, I'll look up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just like, Sarah, and tell me everything. <laughs> so, a lot of it's gonna be, you wanna do what they do. You wanna over exaggerate, but you want enough to where you feel like you're mimicking some of their posture. And they're, like I said, if she's a loud talker, or something, or she laughs a lot, I'm not gonna laugh. She laughs a lot sometimes. I'm not gonna laugh, but it's something where I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna confirm that, hey, that is funny. Now, now I want to make him feel comfortable. That's the biggest thing, right? Okay. You want to see me adjust her neck? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yay. Okay. <laughs> She's already signed off, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, move to the middle, middle. Oh. 
understand the next problem for problems for problems in general. Okay, so her problem is more the right side. Like we talked about before. I'll make her feel comfortable. Okay, that's the biggest thing. Okay? Look at this. That's a little more. So here, I'm gonna do is move her hair out of the way. I'm gonna go under her neck back here with my hand. You have what's called the occiput, C1, C2, and C2 has what's called TPs on both sides. They're like a little bit of a wing on both sides, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's where my contact is going to be to help push that bone around that way. I might be loud. Okay, let's do this together. Oh, no. There you go. All right, so nice and easy. Not bad at all. Oh, this is good to see this. <laughs> <laughs> that felt good. Next, next, next. Ready? Next. All right, here too. Simple, very easy. All the way down. How's that, Elijah? Yeah. Good. Grab a seat. All right, good luck, good luck. You're welcome. Good job. Any questions so far? Yes. Okay. So I honestly have no idea how this works. Mm -hmm. So you're moving the bone, and I know that like let's say when you Good. crack your fingers, you know you're like relieving like the air and like the synovial joints. Yes. So is that what's happening here? That's exactly it. So it's just relieving air. Okay. Relieving pressure in the joint so those can move normally. <laughs> most people have normal bones in their most people have normal bones in their in their body. It's how they're lining up. So if the body's lining up like this, hunching over, studying all day long. Something's going to lock up in there, causing pressure. The pressure hits a threshold, causing pain. My job is really to get the pressure so the body can come back to normal alignment, normal motion. That will keep that pressure down by stretching, by icing, by getting it stronger. So over time, correcting that spine from here to here so they feel taller but also more relaxed here versus under tension, the body gets more tense. Need to fire. Can I have another question? Yes. This is a silly question. Yes. But you know how like in movies people always like kill each other? Uh huh. Like, how is this different? Because like, the movies are, are they real or fake? Well, yeah, they're fake, but they're I They're fake, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it, sh it shows a reason to watch the show because it's gonna, if they dis they dis like that, they fall down. <laughs> you know? It's something to where that's the way movies are made. Martial arts, you go back to that, whatever it is, too. People want to see that, so what they do? They put them in the movie. Audience demands it, it works, they believe it. That's what people don't want to get the neck adjusted for me, because they see that, they go, Arnold did that in a movie 10 years ago, I don't want you to do that to me. It's a movie, it's not real. So yeah, I get it, I get it. Yes? I don't know if this could be talking or not, but... Um, I don't know. Do you, do you make your patient sign papers before, like, Good. a paper that, like, to make sure, like, just in case, like, by accident, like, I what we have is called initial in paper uh, paper or new patient intake form, and it, it verifies what's going on in the office that there is a risk of being not injured, but of causing a problem sometimes. So we have everyone. It's part of normal patient protocol or new patient protocol. All paper you have what's called a blue form has their information, our disclosure. We're going to help you as much as we can with this and this and this. So it's like an ethics ethics type of a statement. It, but you have you need that for all your documents to make sure you're safe and the patient's safe to realize as a doctor, even as nurses, as a PA, anyone who's a licensed healthcare practitioner, the state is, is meant the state of California is meant to protect us from you. There are police to make sure we're doing our job. Having that paperwork signed if something does happen, at that point that gives us that releases some liability that hey, we tried our best. Sorry. Who is the most Risky healthcare profession out there. Anesthesiologists. Yes, and why anesthesiologists? Why are they the most risky? Because Their titration has to be almost perfect sometimes. Touch for a surgery on someone under under anesthesia. If not, the heart stops. Ouch. Yeah, I don't worry about a bruised neck, I worry about my heart stopping. My brain does the box to my brain. Because they have high risk, they high they pay a high malpractice, high malpractice. To, uh, to negate that risk. Most anesthesiologists work for a hospital, this hospital contract a better rate for their insurance. How about pediatrics? Whoever's been, whoever's, who has, who's been born here? All of us, right? Just say, raise your hand, please. 
Just open. born in general. Oh, oh, yeah, all of Like a, by, by a, by a, a, not a pediatric, who's a baby doctor? OB-GYN. Yeah, OB-GYN. Okay. OB-GYN doctors, I, I have a patient, her husband, her husband and daughter's an OB-GYN uh, doctors. They have to work full time because their malpractice insurance is so high. Three, four thousand dollars a month to sell insurance. Crazy. Oh. Because of the risk of when you're giving birth, things can happen. You're going into something that everyone's, everyone's human body is not the same. So doing surgery, anesthesiology, giving birth, or, or being the doctor gives, gives, uh, does the birth, there's always a risk involved. Higher the risk, higher malpractice. Chiropractors, we have the lowest malpractice. One well, of the lowest risk because we do our due diligence to make sure it's safe for the patient. Okay, let's go, let's show video three. Yes. Why? Oh yeah. Just hold, yeah. Okay. A lot. Of, right, we'll just hold up for now. Is go ahead. We, we just pull it up for now, radio. Right a lot of it is who wants. To, who does volunteer work now in a healthcare field and the healthcare office? Anybody? Anybody? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Right. Okay. Why is it important you think to do volunteer work in a healthcare office? What's that? So you can get like a feel for it and how it works. Yes. When, when you get a feel for it, you understand is, is it for you or not? Yeah. Can can you actually benefit by being there, but understanding how the doctor relationship works? I my interns come out, they shadow me. They help with the back office, front office, whatever it is too. They help me and that what it is, a benefit to me. When you come to an office and want to volunteer through the school or privately too, you have to be a benefit to them. Right now, to be honest with you, you're probably not. So how do you help them? What's the easiest way to help a doctor's office that's been around for a long time that is not technologically savvy? You help them switch their from paper to Yes, or help them with their social media. Help them with their Facebook, Instabook, their Google, their Yelp, whatever it is too. Take pictures and show them how to load it to their, their pages to help their business actually do better. So you guys know stuff already that can help a healthcare office or center, whatever it is, too, that isn't even medically related. They want your help. You just have to get to know who you are and sometimes get a good referral to from a teacher, hit, hint, that you are a good person. They can trust you with their patients. If an intern messes up or even a staff messes up, what happens is it's a reflection of me if I'm there or not because my name's on the door. So I want to make sure my office is ethically sound and there for the patient, not for them. I gotta say it again. It's because I want them there for the patient, not for them. When I first did in my office, I think at first I fired the first five people that came in the door that were staff because they're on their phone. This is like an old Blackberry too, like an old flip phone or something. Or on the on the on the office phone calling their friends. I'm like what? exact I said, no no, get your stuff in. Thanks for coming. You know, so I, I, I don't, because again, reflection of me, someone walks in the first, walks in the door, right? He walks through the first time, how many times do you, get, you have to give him a good first impression? Once. Once. Why don't people understand that? Walk in to see the staff on the phone, talk to friend as they're waiting by the front going like, is someone going to help me or am I going to sit here forever? Oh, I, yeah. I want my staff, Seraphim knows, to know their name when they walk in the door. New patient or someone that's been here before. Why? Why do you want to say someone's name? Again, this is just we've gone before to why. If I if I, if your name is Jerry, if I say hey Jerry, how you doing? What does that mean? You're not a number. There's a person. There's a relationship there already. That is your name, Jerry. Is that what you're laughing? Okay. Uh, cool. Is that? Uh, it's something to where you're. You, it, it goes. You hey, he knows me. If you're in a crowd, you say someone's name. And it, it's maybe that person doesn't hear you, but someone else has the same name. What happens? You turn around to like, hey, does he know? Do I know that? No, I don't. No, I'm sorry. No. So you got to realize, saying someone's name doesn't matter the first time, second time, third time allows them to know that you know them, and they have that that little bit of trust that helps them trust you. All right. We get on time too. Uh, I want to blab too much. Two thirty. Good. Time to class up. All right. These are my interns from. Was it spring? Was this professional? Spring, early January 2019. So June of 2019. All right, guys. 
So let's go to a couple questions. Let's start from when did you start? Was it this semester or last semester? Oh, last semester, September 19th. So you've been here like almost nine months then? Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. And Ms. Cast, you started when? January 2019. Wow, this year. That's 19 right okay, there. <laughs> and when you first came in, Cassie, what was how was how were you thinking this was gonna be? Well, I went to another internship before here, so at that internship, they usually just kind of like threw me to the side, just gave me like physically. physically? Yes, physically. Um, they didn't really give me a lot to do, so when I got here, it was like okay. a different pace because I was doing a lot more than at the other place. Wow, well, when other place you were saying, did it, give, did it help build up your confidence in for internships? No. Could you do And when you first came in, how was the pace? Were you used to right away, or did it take time, take time to get used to? It took a minute. Yeah, a couple minutes, man. A couple yeah. minutes, I mean. Yeah, a couple months. No. <laughs> and do you realize when you first came in, were you more, if you want to call it, nervous? More excited. Just to better myself and improve myself. Good, good, good. Did, did you feel like it was a good fit right away, or kind of take yeah, time? it was a good fit. Good, good. good. And so we came in last last September. How was your experience your first camp? Do you have any other internships beforehand, or was it? Okay. So this was my first internship. So that's why I was like nervous. I'm like, I'm gonna mess up. You did mess up a lot. You fixed it though. This is part of learning, right? And you guys realized to we start start with you too. How do you, when you say this is a practice? What does that mean to you? Practice. It helps me. I can build up my confidence, I can talk to the patients, I can listen, and it helps me out there in the real, real world. <laughs> mm -hmm. And How does it help in the real world? To have more social experience, uh, more communication, know how to grow in a different pace. Mm -hmm. That's good enough, don't, don't force it. Yeah. <laughs> and Cassie, what, is, what does the practice mean to you now that you've been here for a while? Um, you know, same thing I said, right, about hospital. Exactly. Like, Come on, yeah, don't, don't read this so, question. So even if I didn't get a job in the health field, like years later, no matter what job, I need to know how to talk to people. So being here taught me those basic skills of starting a conversation, ending a conversation, just opening up and branching out to all people, all ages, all genders, mm -hmm. everybody. And when you do that, Cassie, have you found that it could be fun too? Yeah. Good. Right. And part of it too, Sarah, have you noticed too that when you're with people, do you feel more comfortable now with them? I feel, yes, very comfortable because when you have that conversation every so often with the same patient, it builds trust between you two. Oh, so, huh. well, well, that's like that's like a brain versus explosion there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but it's good that you trust, like they get to trust you, and you have to trust them. Just to add on to that, I notice a lot. You remember, so you remember about people's pets. You remember about their kids. So I try to do that when I talk to them. I'll be like, "How's your dog?" or "How's your son?" Like I listen and I try to remember. An angel face. Wow, yeah. makes me so proud. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you should think so it's you trust you as a um, worker here, it makes a, it makes a safe environment for the clinic. And how important, Cassie, is the smile to with patients? So what? To smile. Oh, important? What? Because <laughs> it makes them feel comfortable in a setting that they may not really be comfortable with. It's hard walking into an environment where everyone seems angry, so when you greet them with a smile, they're happy, they feel welcomed, and they actually want to be here. Huge, huge, huge. And you also us for your last next interview for 2019 internships program? Probably not, but... Thanks, girls. So does that make sense? When you're an intern, my job is to make you more comfortable with patients, so you actually want to talk to people. You want to remember their names. I've been to right now, and she's like, I can't remember people's names. Like, you remember everyone's name now. I get on her every day. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? So my thing is making sure whatever their weakness is, I work on that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was saying, well, that's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, so a lot of it is it's trainable. You guys, all the potential to do as well as you want to do, you just have to work hard at it, work hard at it, and work hard at it. You guys are in your in, in the first inning of the World Series. You have a long way to go. Just keep working hard. Work. Your teacher has a lot of references and resources for you that can help you with everything. Get that program back there because that's an awesome program. You guys are an awesome program. But thanks for listening to me. Hope this is helpful. Thank you. Hope this talk helps you understand that 
being in practice for 15 years myself and working with patients for that period of time, along with listening to my senior patients when I do my workshops, helps people understand that being a healthcare practitioner takes time to learn that craft, that field, listening to patients properly, and then being competent and experienced in your field over time to help patients get better no matter what you're doing. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this talk. And the show notes always has the full video of this podcast along with other podcast videos, along with the highlights of everything we've done talked about today. All right, so enjoy the week and we'll see you next week.